NFL Weekly Throwdown, Week 15, but we're not going to skip past Week 14 because, ladies and gentlemen, we just came off of an epic week. Vinny and I both. Mr. Ursay? <laughs> Love to see it. Love to see it. Pitbull's in. Pitbull. <laughs> Gandolfini from the grave. And we're looking at positive vibes only coming into Week 15. Let's keep it rolling, Vinny. Let's do this. Bada boom, bada bang. Welcome aboard, ladies and gentlemen. Week 15, as I said, uh, Vinny's back this week. He took a week off last week, had some personal obligations. We get it. But he did post his picks last week. And ladies and gentlemen, it wasn't blowing smoke on the intro. We are both swinging out of week 14. Let's pull it up here and uh, put the results behind the words here. I won 11-3, and three, my best week of the year. Coming off of uh, a couple weeks ago, I had my worst week of the year in week 13, I believe. So Vinny went 5-1, and one, baby. And if you, if you question any of these numbers, just watch last week's show and Vinny posted uh, in the comments. It's time stamps, baby. We're not lying. Nobody's here to bullshit you. We're trying to win bringing some picks to the people and we're doing good, man. Like I'm at a plus eight ninety for the year based on a hundred dollars standard bet. 54.7 overall percentage. And Vinny is hitting at a 62.7 plus 14 50 on a much smaller sample size. So, I mean, what are you going to do Vinny? Welcome in, man. How are you feeling coming off of this? And how are you feeling at 62 seven? Can you keep this rolling? I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I feel like the, honestly, I feel like the Broncos little run here that they've had the last, you know, six weeks has really, <laughs> really saved me. I just keep that. I just been keep betting Denver on the spread. They they, they keep making them dogs. I think I'm there's a few teams rolling. like that. There's a few teams that if you're riding the wave, like and the Cowboys too, I mean, there's a couple others. And the, and the Giants, I, the Giants have been like at yep. least like almost a touchdown uh, dog the last like month. And like even the games that like they're what I think they're three and four in their last four games. And even the game they lost was by three points. Like they're just covering. Uh, yeah, I hate like, to say it. Fading the Lions, who's it's my team, but the fading the Lions has been another secret to success. I know it's winning for me. Uh, Reluctantly, because <laughs> again, I bet without emotion. So let's jump right in, Vinny. We have a full slate. We have 16 games. First time, I think, since we've both been on that we have the entire league playing with no bye weeks. We're I jumping so, right too. in. The Chargers 5-8 and eight, going into the Vegas Raiders 5-8. and eight. And the big breaking news, if you haven't heard yet, Justin Herbert, who I'm a hater on anyway, he's out. Obviously a big hit. That's their best player. Uh, and it changes everything for me because I actually liked the Chargers before I heard the um, uh, final news here. 33 and a half and minus three Raiders. I don't know where the line has gone since this, because this is from this morning, probably gone bonkers, but Vinny, are you touching this game? What are you doing here? No, I, I don't know how you touch this game. Both teams are inconsistent and bad. Uh, not worth touching. Even with Herbert, uh, the Chargers are bad. So what's this guy's name? I'm going to challenge you. I looked it up earlier. Oh, I have I no idea. intentionally uh, I, didn't even write it down. Didn't put it in my notes I, because I, I thought it was more fun oh, to not I have, know. I have no idea. I saw they signed somebody off the practice squad, though, uh, who I forget what team he plays. He's 28 he years TCU. old. He went to, like, Delaware State or something. I mean, and I'm uh, – I, me I right. think they signed, like, TCU's old quarterback off the practice squad or something. I I think I saw that. I don't know. I I have no interest in this game. Supposedly, supposedly, uh, this quarterback has the reins for the rest of the year. And, uh, you know, maybe it's good for the Chargers to have a tank year. They weren't going anywhere anyway. Staley's going to get fired now for sure. I mean, he was already on the hot seat, oh, in my definitely. opinion. It's over. It might not even last. Enough. If the Raiders win this game, it might be over. And if I'm the Raiders or if I'm the Chargers brass, I'm, I'm just get, getting it over with now, baby. You know, get, let's, let's let the, uh, what do you call it? The detoxification Great. begin. You know, rip the bandaid off. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So no bets on this game. Uh, you got to be crazy. You don't even know what you're betting on there. How about this one? The Vikings seven and six. The Bengals seven and six. And we've had a little bit of uh, Browning starting to look like he might be able to play a little bit. And Dobbs has regressed and looks like he can't play at all now. All of a sudden, I don't have any lines on the screen here, but I do have it at since he minus three and a half and the over under I have at thirty nine and a half. I don't know where I you're at with that, thing. with those lines. But yep. What are you doing I with got this the thing? Same thing? 
I'm not touching it. Uh, Browning looks good. Browning looks good. I, I, you know, if I had to, if I had to take a team here, I, I think Cincinnati probably gets the job done here. Mm -hmm. Uh, they got Nick, Nick Mullen, I believe is starting at quarterback now for the Vikings. I don't know how you can touch the Vikings. Oh yeah. They benched, no, they benched him midway through last game. Uh, yeah, but I thought he might start yards. again. I don't know. It's it's no, a no, no, they're going, look. they're going with Mullins. Yeah, they're going Mullins. I I can't no, believe they're I seven and no six, way. and they're very much alive in the in the NFC wild card here. They man. are in Jeff. I mean, we'll see what happens if Jefferson plays this week. He played for like one possession and then got wrecked and was out the rest of the game. Uh so that was that was bad for Jefferson. Uh, but yeah, I think Cincinnati wins this game, but I, I have no interest in trying to play this threat or anything like that. I, I think this could be another ugly game. Yeah, I have uh, Cincinnati winning by like three or four, and the, my totals are right on par here with, with Vegas. I have it at 40, so no thanks on this game. You got numbers all over the place. Another pair of seven and six teams. It's funny, man. There's so many of these middle-of-the-road teams that are in the playoff hunt, and it's make-or-break time with what... Uh, Five, four games left. Seven and six. I mean, these last four teams we just talked about, a couple of these teams are going to make the playoffs, sadly. Pittsburgh at seven and six going into Indy. We have this spread at Pittsburgh getting two and a half. Uh, over under is 42. Is that what you have? Yep. Yeah. What are you doing here? I, I'll be honest. Three games in a row? Games. Yeah. These first three. I, Pittsburgh's lost what two games in a row and the two games in the last their last like four game days to teams with two wins. Like I don't know how you can like I don't know how you can play them and the Colts haven't looked great either. No, this is like, this is another one, man. I, I, great minds think alike, and we're both no bets on the first three three games here. You yeah. don't have to bet every game, and this is a full slate. Yeah, yeah, we're both dodging this one. Let's just skip right past it. Seven and six, another seven and six team. It seems like half the league is seven and six or six and seven. Denver going into the waffling Detroit Lions, who at one point looked really good and have now started the downward trend, and nobody's hotter than Denver, maybe. I mean, there's only a couple teams hotter than them. They were a punching bag for us early in the season. I still hate Russell Wilson. What are you doing here? We have, uh, what do we have? Four and a half. Denver getting four and a half and 46 and a half. I'm, say you, I'm taking I'm taking Denver at four and a half. I, even if they lose, I feel like it's a close game. Their defense is good enough to keep them in, uh, to keep them in games. Russ hasn't looked half bad, especially in this little stretch. I, I can definitely even if they lose, I can see them losing like you know twenty to seventeen or something like that. I think they cover this four and a half. Me too, and it's a green light special for me, baby. It's the first green lighter of the week. And like I said, we're riding on some hot, hot, uh, you know, you you mentioned uh, a team or two before we started here. Denver being one of them has been hot and the Lions have been regressing. Defense sucks, man. I mean, their offense has, has been pretty, pretty good except for turnovers. But yeah, man, four and a half is a big number. And the Lions like drama lately. It seems like they're always in a close game. Like you said, even if the Lions win this, which I expect, I hope they will as a Lions fan. I think it's going to be a nail biter. I, four and a half is too many points. And uh, over under, I agreed with wholeheartedly. I had this game at 23 23 on my capping tool. So I'd, I wouldn't even pick a, a winner. It's, you know, it's it's pretty much dead even, meaning that Denver's a better team and, a, and even, you know, a, a, a non home field advantage situation, a neutral, a neutral site. Denver's actually trending upward and beating them. So yeah, we both like the Broncos to cover here. Good. Vinny, we're through four games. You know, huh. We're on the same page in all four. How about the five and eight Bears who have looked, by their standards, really good the last few weeks? Going into the Browns, the Joe Flacco uh, reunion tour. And, man, I got to be honest. Flacco looks good, dude. This team is so good around him that Flacco is like one of those dudes. He's serviceable. I would compare him to Jared Goff. When the team around him is clicking and he's protected, he looks damn good, and he's got this. I think he's got this young team fired up, man. Like it seems like they believe in him in the locker room. But uh, before I go, spoiler alerting on my picks here. Where'd you come out on this one? Because I have minus three, the Browns minus three, and over under is thirty seven and a half. Yeah, that that's what I have too, and I I I didn't touch it because I don't know if Flacco's starting. 
They sent Why? him back to practice squad. Like if they announce he's Why is, starting, is, uh, what's his I name? I have no idea. I just saw Obviously yeah, not I, Watson, but what's his name? I uh, saw PJ, yeah, yeah. Uh, Walker. I don't is he know. Back? I saw I saw yesterday that he is back on practice squad, and Flacco oh, wants to on. stay with the Browns, but they sent them back down. So that, I mean, I haven't seen if there's an update. If there's an update on that, like I would take Flacco. If there was an if if Flacco was the starter, I would take the Browns at minus three here. But not knowing that, I can't touch the game. That I'm is trying to my, get a quick update while we're sitting here. Yeah, uh, that was yeah. Is, I, yeah, I saw that. Like he played great, and then like I was, I was surprised that they sent them back down the practice squad. Washington so was, Post says this is yesterday though. Joe Flacco is a starter for the rest of the season, and I thought I'd seen the same thing. Okay, so I don't know where you got that information. Start, yeah, I'm not questioning. Yeah, it, so if he's yeah, so if he's starting, then I would take it. I I saw it what I want. And I say. saw a locker room highlight, and this is why night. I brought up that it seems like the team's buying in. They were rallying around him, dude. Oh I mean, he's yeah, he's a Super Bowl I, winner. Yeah, he's a veteran, and he's definitely. I would take Flacco over about half the league right now, especially you know on a team that's already good. The Browns are a damn good team. Oh but yeah, no, said, I would. Yeah, I'll take him. I'm going the over here, uh, and it's a green light. My second green light, 37 and a half. I guess this uh, this sheet has it at 38. I have this at 44 or so. I like uh, the Browns to win about 24-21. The Bears have a pretty good uh, defense when it comes to turnovers and such, but they can't really stop anybody. They're still getting up 24 points a game average. And the Browns are, I mean, the Flacco train is rolling, baby, and, and We'll have to look into this because I don't know if Vinny, Vinny had that information. So I'm. Oh, yeah. That's I just Googled it. So they announced he's the starter for the rest of the season, but they've sent him back down the practice squad yesterday. That is confusing as like everything I see. Yeah. Brown, even on the Browns, uh, the Brown, like the Browns, like, uh, site, uh, Joe Flacco reverts back to practice squad again. That was a day ago. CBS Sports. I wonder if there's uh, like some kind of contractual reason with like a rookie that they had to pull up to the squad. I don't know. Yeah. You know, just- I mean, it's, it's risky because like if he's on practice squad, anybody can grab him. So yeah, you dude, name him your starter the rest of the year. It's a wild ride because so he's, like, yeah, yeah, I would there's only probably play, four like, or I'm, five teams that would take Flacco right now. Gladly. I mean, yeah, Minnesota, like, I'm, and I'm like only that. playing. Yeah. I'm only playing Flacco. I'm only playing the Browns at minus three. If Flacco is the starter, anybody I'll say else, that I would I'm play the over either it. way. I don't know. I don't even know who they're, option is walkers out right and watson's yeah, obviously i have out, so no I idea i it's have flacco. no idea yeah <laughs> it's flacco. we're going with it play the over and it's a green light over i think it's i think it's going to go way over because the browns are scoring right now they're fired up and the bears are playing pretty good offense too for the first time yeah. this year two more six and seven teams the battle of the bay tampa bay at green bay and we have this one at three and a half or I actually have it at three and 42 and a half or 43 for the over under. Where'd you come out on this one, Vinny? I'm not touching this game, dude. We're on locks. These two, these two teams are like, these two teams are just Jekyll and Hyde teams. You know, one week Tampa can put up 40. The next week they put up six green Bay's like the same thing. One week they score 30. The next week they score 10. I, I just, they're too inconsistent. I would love if Tampa Bay won this game, but I, again, they're too inconsistent to, to confidently take at three and a half to put it into perspective as an NFC North person with the lions last week, the whole uh, local media was green Bay has got this division now because they were six and six. The lions were nine and three and green Bay's uh, schedule is just as bad as it gets. They had the giants who they just lost to. They had Tampa, they got the bears. And I think it's, as bad as you can imagine. Their last five or six games were the worst schedule you could throw together if you tried. Patriots, I think, are on there. Uh, but they threw it away. They they threw it away against, you know, a horrendous they lost, team. They lost to Tommy DeVito. Tommy D. And uh, now they're 6-7 and seven on the outside looking in. And uh, even Minnesota, who doesn't have a quarterback. Yep. I mean, it's, it's a wild year, dude. I mean... Yep. It's a wild year. And I'm, I'm fully in lockstep with you. So we are 100% in agreement uh, on the no play games. No plays here. Too much volatility on both sides. Let's move. Another 7 and 6 team. Every team is 6 and 7 or 7 and 6. The Houston Texans, who threw down a uh, horrendous game after being maybe the, the hottest team in the league, coming into Tennessee, who's winning some games inexplicably with, with uh, 
I guess the Will Levis show is starting to come on because he's he's a much better player than Tannehill. Uh, Tennessee at home minus two and a half, which is a little bit questionable here to me, and thirty seven and a half. What say you on this one? This is a it's a wild game. I yeah I uh, I I'm taking Tennessee here at uh, at the minus two and a half. The tech, it seems like the last couple of games, Stroud has kind of hit that rookie wall. He looked really bad last week. He wow, looked really they bad. I, they I didn't see that. Six, I think, I I think they that. scored like six points. I, they got, I, it wasn't even a game. I, the Jets just dominated them, which is crazy. And Tank Dell's out, but, who was his best yeah, weapon. Yeah, Dell's out. Nico Collins is banged up. I'm, you know, and like you said, Levis is, Levis is just playing good. I think Levis has a starting job next year with this Titans team that, yeah, I think yeah. they they just keep fighting. That was a big win over Miami. The defense looks solid. I'm taking Tennessee here. And Tennessee's got no reason to tank either. They're still uh, I guess mathematically alive, but like you said, I mean, they're they're going to let Levis, they're taking the reins off a little bit and see what they have mm-hmm. because I I agree. I think he's won the job already uh for next year. And uh yeah, I'm not taking the Titans, but I will take the over 37 and a half. Uh, I have this game at about 42 points, so it's a yeah. uh, it's not a super confident play, but I like the over here. Uh, but yeah, man, Houston putting up that stinker last week was a bit of a mystery. But like you said, a couple of their their best weapons are out, so it is what it is. And how about this one? The Coog Hunter is back, baby. And I made a video in tribute to my hatred of Zach Wilson and the the Coog Hunter's <laughs> legacy. I thought it was over. You know, there was the, there was the uh, the mumblings about him not wanting to go in a couple weeks ago, which I think, honestly, looking back, it's it's one of those stories where it's like, man, that's that's a good uh, like a hole story to talk about because like how fun is it to hate Zach Wilson? It's really fun, but I can't imagine that any competitor at this level would say, no, nope, I'm not going back in. I'm healthy, but I'm not going back in. These guys have too big of egos, yes. and Wilson's playing for his career. I mean, he's. He's about two I, I, bad games away from becoming uh, Ryan Lee for Jamarcus Russell. So that last week was uh, definitely his best game. And the Jets, even even though they're five and eight, man, I mean, this is the AFC. There's so many teams at six and seven. They're still mathematically alive. They're not going to make the playoffs, but who knows, man? Where'd you come out on this one, dude? I earlier I was I, I wasn't touching it, but the Dolphins center. Uh, they announced is out for the year. Now uh, he got hurt last night. That was part of the reason of the uh, collapse. So I'm gonna say at least the Jets cover this 13 and a half. I doubt is this day. 13 stays and a half, by the way. Is that, uh, is it, that? Yeah, it was 13. When I looked earlier, it was 13 and a half. I got a feeling this line is going to move though. Um, I have it at eight and a half on my sheet, and I pulled this this morning. So this is yeah, weird. That I it's had five points different. I'm gonna check the live right now. Is that what you yeah. have live? Thirteen and a half. Let me let me check right now. I had third when I checked uh, this afternoon. I had thirteen and a half as well, and I thought it was. I was like, that's oh, crazy. that's crazy, because I was like, that, I'm like, I might, I'm like, I might play this, and then I saw that the, I saw that the uh, center for Miami is out for the year now, and I'm like, oh, that's. Why. I see it at eight and a half like, and thirty nine right now, on scores and odds, there. which is a pretty dependable uh, app. Yeah, I just pulled Check up. Check it out. Uh, yep, it's down to eight and a half. Yeah, yep, so I see, at eight and a half. At, eight yeah, and a half. It seems like half, it's a more reasonable yeah, number. At eight and a half, I don't know. I I'm staying away from this game because that they look bad. They the Dolphins at like the end of that game, they just looked so they couldn't move the ball. And even what before then, they couldn't really move the ball. The Jets have a decent defense. I I just want no part of this. A nice division game. I hope the Jets win. I'm looking at an over um, with medium confidence. I had this game at about 44 points. The over-under is now down to 39. I think this can go over. I'm not betting the fish or the Jets. Like you said, this is it's a risky uh, proposition here. I don't know what's wrong with Miami. It's funny, man, because I saw a tweet last night. Somebody, I don't even know who it was. I don't even know if, I don't even know if I know who they are in general, but I can't think of who it was if I do. But they said something like, is it just me or is this like the shakiest number of quote unquote good teams in the NFL that we can imagine? I mean, look at Philly. Oh yeah. Everybody. The, Everybody. The Lions the, look with the exception bad. of San 
with the exception of San Francisco, everybody else has had issues. And they did, but it was injuries with them. They but... did, right. You had it right. When when San Francisco's two best offensive players were out, they were not, you know, they weren't, they didn't look great. Yeah, and everybody and else has Jacksonville, been... Buffalo have all looked bad at times this year. Uh Miami looks bad right now. Detroit looks bad right now. Uh, you know Philly looks awful. Yeah, Philly is back <laughs> in. They're getting to a, the hard part of their schedule, and it's showing. KC is eight and five, and they look bad. It's wild. So there is, yep. other than San Francisco, man, it's it's kind of wide open for the rest of the league. Uh-huh. In San Francisco, I mean, I hate to say it because I, I would never wish this upon anybody, but their best players are super injury pl- injury prone players too. McCaffrey is fragile. And if he goes down for any reason or Debo, that's a different team. Yeah, uh, that's, that's how quick it can change with them too. So it's it's a it's going to be a fun last few weeks here. But uh, yeah, dude, I will take the uh, over in this game. And you're not touching this game, or no, I'm not going to touch okay. it. No, nope, I think that's that. probably smart. Let's move along. Speaking of the Chiefs, coming off the worst run in Kansas City Chiefs, I would say in the last five years. Uh, and it's not a fluke. It's not like they're losing, uh, you know, and you can yell about the bad call or whatever it was, but it wasn't a bad call. Kadarius no, Tony is a born loser, and he's he needs to be uh, purged out of the league. I hate somebody right. like that. But other than that, the the, the Chiefs offense sucks, guys. It's defense awful. is the best defense they've ever had in, their, in this. Uh, yep. In this era of the Chiefs, which is the best franchise in the NFL. But they're bad right now, folks. Minus nine and a half going into the arguably the worst team in the NFL. The three and ten Patriots. Yeah, I have this at nine and a half and thirty-seven. Nine and a half points at home. Green light special, baby. Give me the Patriots. And I'm not saying that because I'm a I believe that the Patriots are turning a corner or anything. They suck and they're bad and they're too they really should be losing on purpose. And they really should be walking uh, the old grump grandpa out of the office in, you know, full blood transfusion in New England. But I'm saying this because the Patriots are not good. I don't know that they're going to outscore them by 10, dude. Where are you at on this one? I I, I was very tempted to play the over here, but I'm, I'm skipping this one. I just... Kansas City just doesn't look good enough to cover nine and a half right now, and I don't know if new I don't know if the Patriots can score. They scored last week against a bad team. I'm yeah, I'm not touching the over under. Yeah, I, I'm not. I, I'm just not touching this game. You I need the Patriots, baby. I have this game at twenty to sixteen. Yeah, I mean that's this that's is, the wheelhouse where the Chiefs are scoring. They're getting like seventeen to twenty three points a game. My, my my worry is the offense hasn't looked good, but now my you know Mahomes is pissed after last week. So I'm expecting him to have a big game, and I I can definitely see this being one of those games that like even if the offense isn't clicking, they could have like three defensive touchdowns because of how bad New England does. Yeah, and that's like, I, that's the devil's advocate to my yeah to my and that, play that, that, for the that, Patriots is that they're pissed and they need it, baby. They're they're this eight and five. Oh, yeah. I can't remember. They're, they're, they're playing for the play. I mean, field pretty much. I think. Oh yeah. Oh, they're yeah. You're gonna see they, Mahomes going into a. Uh, Foreign environment on the road in the playoffs, first time in his career, which is the craziest stat I've ever heard. How many years is yeah. he in? This is his sixth season or something. I think He's so. never played a playoff game on the road. That is wild. Yeah. And I'm not confident. This isn't their year, guys. I, I think there's this about is, five better teams. Baltimore see, is way better this than this to me. They kind of remind me of when the Warriors won uh, the NBA championship a couple years ago where that whole year was like the Warriors weren't really the best team. Everybody was injury prone and they got to the, like, as soon as talking about last year's Super Bowl win. No, 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 the, no, with, uh, it's just like the NBA with golden state. That's what are you comparing this year's chiefs or last year's chiefs? This year, this year's chiefs. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Where like, like that year, the last time the Warriors won the title, they weren't the best team. They got lucky that other teams got hurt, but they started clicking at the right time. Yep. Kansas City's got five weeks to figure it out. If they, they figure, you know, right. You know, it only take it only takes one week for them to start clicking. They start clicking and like they they could run through the AFC because the AFC just isn't good. Whoever is with, hot going into the, 
yeah, whoever is hot going into the playoffs for the AFC is going to come out of it because that the AFC is just garbage. With this good opinion. defense and Patrick Mahomes, you're never out of it. Like mm-hmm. as much as I think Baltimore is a superior team to them overall. I mean, you saw that freaking miracle. I'll never forget that game when Mahomes went down and beat the Bills. When Josh Allen, and you can call him a choke gag artist all you want, but Josh Allen went down there and heroed Buffalo into what should have been a win in any other game in reality in history. And then Mahomes yep. went down and scored in 10 seconds or whatever. It was the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Yeah, it was so dumb. And, uh, I think uh, I think Josh Allen's whole legacy would be different if it wasn't for that game, but that's how damn good Mahomes is. So mad respect. But with that said, man, give me the yeah. Patriots in this one at nine and a half. It's too many points until until KC proves me otherwise. Let's go to the next one. Five and eight Giants who are all of a sudden uh, Danny DeVito. <laughs> what is he? Three and one as a starter or whatever he is. So yeah. good, good, good story for the kid. I mean, this team had nothing good going for it at the beginning of the year. And the Saints are another one of those teams where. Jekyll and Hyde, and I don't think even at their best they're very good. They're six and seven. Saints minus six at home. And 36 and a half. I actually have this one at uh 37 and a half. I don't know, it's fluctuating, but Vinny, yep. what are you doing with this one? I'm taking the Giants and I'm taking the over. I I think that I I you have it at five and a half? I think I yeah, I have five. I have it at five and a half. I'll take the Giants at five and a half. They might not win. I think Dan. I I think this kid keeps it close. They seem to be rallying behind the kid. They're technically only a half. They're only a game out of the playoffs right now, which is the most remarkable thing that has happened I know, so far. I know. It's not they're right. Not and I mean, New it. Orleans and New Orleans is also playing for a playoff spot because you have to win that division basically to get in. Yeah, they're salt. Uh, they're all six division. and seven, aren't they? Aren't there right. all three that, of them yeah. six and seven? Yep. Oh, so shit, I mean, Joe. they need the game. I think the line is low, but I yeah, I think the Giants just play them close, even if they lose. What's up so, with uh, uh, what's the Saints quarterback situation? I know it's week to week, and I know. Uh, I mean, I hate to even hard. admit that I don't know, but it's so. It's bad. It, it they're, fluctuates they're... every week. I mean, and I don't even think it yep. matters with with uh, Derek Carr or. Well, J- Jameis Winston, whatever. They're all the yeah. same. I mean, Derek Carr is not yeah. good. I don't even know if he's healthy. I don't even care. Yeah, but I'll say this. I'm not touching this game. It's a no-touch game, but I uh, I do lean <laughs> Giants if I'm going to play it. Yeah, I, I'm going to take – I mean, I just think five and a half is a lot for a Giants yeah, team yeah. that seems to have a spark right now. So I have it at three. I'm going to take I have, that. Yeah. I have New Orleans winning by three. Okay. So, yeah. I'll well, Giants will cover in that case. Yep. Let's move. The one and twelve Carolina Panthers hosting the six and seven. Yeah, there are three teams in the NFC South. Mm-hmm. One of these sad, sad teams are getting into the uh, playoffs as a division champion. And I don't know who's the best out of these three because they're all kind of crap. Uh, oh, they're but, awful. But the Panthers are the worst. I mean, I hate to say it because I like to say that the Patriots are the worst team in the league, but the Panthers are so bad. Uh, yep. So Carolina plus three at home, 34 and a half or 35, depending on where you're looking. Are you doing anything with this game? I'm taking Atlanta. I, I, I don't think they're good, but I don't think Carolina is going to, I think Carolina is only going to score 10 points. So if Atlanta can score 20, the game, like, like if Atlanta scores 14 or 20, I think they, they end up covering the spread. So I am going to take Atlanta. Yeah, I have this game pretty much right on with Vegas. Not touching this one either. I guess I would lean Atlanta barely. It's too close though, man. I, yeah, like I don't think I don't think either team's going to score 20, you know? Uh, I think it's going to be I, like a 20 uh 18 15, 18 16, you know, 17 14 type game. Yeah. But yeah, I, I'm off this one. You're taking the Falcons. I can't, be, you know, and the Falcons are in a playoff hunt here. They they should win this. They, I, I think they're awful. I can't believe they're in the playoff hunt. I think they are an absolutely terrible team, but I Carolina can they have, beat a modified They have team good point. players on offense. They do. They players. don't use them. Yeah, they don't, they don't use them. But, I mean, they had a good game last. They, you know, they had a good game last week. They've I shown flashes. One of those Right. One of those games, I wouldn't be surprised if they win by, you know, they win by 10 points. So I'm going to take it. I'm going to take Atlanta here. I think the line's a little low. 
the Commanders, 4-9, going into another team who's mathematically involved here, the 6-7 and seven Rams. And I think the Rams are playing some pretty decent ball here. They've had a tough schedule. Rams minus 7. I have this at 6.5 and, and 48.5. And this sheet has it at 7 and 49. Where'd you come out on this one? Because I have a green light special brewing here for you. Do you? I... I can't touch this game. I, I agree. I think the Rams look the Rams are fun right now to watch. Yeah. I just I can't touch I can't touch this game on the fact that I don't know how their defense is going to play against the commanders. The commanders have not been good this year, but some games they score thirty, some games they score five. Yeah. It's like, They're a wild ride, I, the commanders. Right. So it's a, yeah, it, you know, it's one of those that like if you have a strong feeling on the over under, I feel like you press it and hope that that's what Washington team shows up. Cause you know, the Rams won't cover this by themselves. So at this, like, if this was, if the line was like 42 and a half, I'd probably play the over, but at 48, 49, I can't touch it. Yeah. I have it at 51 points. My, my uh, capping tool brought this game to 51, which is pretty pr- too close for, to the uh, Vegas over runner here at 49, but I am going to hammer the Rams. I think the Rams this is another team playing for their lives. And I really do think this is the Sean McVay, Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Donald last hurrah train. If they don't make it this year, and they're not, I don't think they're going to do anything even if they make the playoffs. But this is kind of, I think this team breaks up completely after this year. I think, uh, I think McVay might walk. I think Stafford will be gone and Donald will retire or something. But I think the Rams are going to blow them out. I have this game yeah. like, I have this game at like 33 7, like I think two touchdowns. I think they cover this in a big way. Uh, like I said, the over under, I, I feel like is dead nuts. I'm not touching that, but I love the Rams here. And the commanders have nothing to play for except a draft pick. And uh, yeah. although I, I will say, I, I like what's his name, the quarterback. I think he's how, yeah, put Sam Howell on a decent uh situation. I think he's all right. I'm not saying he's, he's a savior or anything, but yeah, he's at least mid. Green light on the Rams, baby. I love it. This is one of my better picks <laughs> of the week. Uh, moving along. And we're going to the consensus best team in the NFL, 10-3 and three Niners, going into Arizona, who's 3-10. and 10. Arizona playing some interesting ball lately. Who knows what you're going to get with them? They're another wild card team that looks good one week and horrendous the next week. Where'd you come out on this one? Because this is 13 and a half and 47 and a half by the numbers. Yeah. Um, I'm actually not going to touch this. I'm very tempted though, to take that 13 and a half for the 49ers. They're playing for the one seat. They're, they're playing for the one seat. Arizona is not, Arizona is not good, but also I feel like we kind of saw it a little bit last week where when the Niners hat, like when they feel comfortable with a, even like a touchdown lead, they're laying off the gas a little bit to save some touches for some guys. It's like they're trying to get to the playoffs healthy. So I, I'm not going to touch this game. Uh, if I had to, though, I'd take the Niners. I'm go. I'm, I'm taking the Cardinals and I'm, I'm going by the, it's too many points in, in an NFL game. And I know, mm. and, and I, I say that with medium confidence. It's not, this is not a, uh, banger of a bet for me in fact i may not even bet it because it's it's pretty close but 13 and a half is too many points in the nfl i mean and the, if anybody can do it it's the niners over a team like the cardinals but the cardinals are at home they there's a few people playing for their careers there i don't know i i have this one at the, the niners winning by 10 or so and like you yeah, said i think that's... i think they get up they might get up big and then a back door cover by the cardinals when uh when San Francisco takes their foot off the gas and it needs to stay yeah. healthy because they are for the first time, they got a good look at the, uh, they have a real good look at uh home field advantage throughout because I think Dallas has a pretty tough schedule left. The lions have thrown yeah. it away. Philly's kind of thrown it away or the, you know, they're all the Eagles the- have a pit. The Eagles have a pancake schedule uh, and that's kind of what's might save them. I mean, we play, we got the giants twice, but I mean, right now the giants are playing good. Yeah, so it looks a little harder. Than yeah. It's San Francisco. Thought, but, San Francisco is yeah. definitely in the driver's seat for the, for the buy. Well, let's see. Philly's 10 and three, right? Yep. Lions are nine and four. And I don't think anybody else is anybody else in the NFC 
even in the conversation. Yeah, Dallas. If Dallas, Dallas goes, Dallas, uh, if Dallas keeps winning, they can. Dallas ten take and three or nine and four? Ten and three, right? Nine, nine and four, I believe. I believe Dallas is nine and four. I don't know about that. Um, let check. Let's check that real quick because uh, I think Dallas is right there with. I I was pretty sure they were. Let's see. I was pretty sure. We got to fact check ourselves here, folks, because this is a big this is a big week, man. I mean, uh, and we'll get oh, to yeah, Dallas. No, Dallas is all, Dallas is also ten and three. So Dallas, Philly, and San Francisco ten and three. The Lions are nine and four. Lions, they got a tough schedule left. They got Dallas at Dallas, and they've got a couple up. They got Denver this week. The Lions are not going to be in this, so it's those three. And uh, yeah, Philly's got a cupcake, and San Francisco is just better than everybody else. So there, you could have a. a a couple teams finished 14 and three here. All three of them could actually. We'll see. Yeah. It's going to be good. Uh, I think, you know, for me, I like the Cardinals here, but barely. Speaking of Dallas, yeah, here we go. I could have just went to the next slide and saw they are in, indeed 10 and three. Going into Buffalo, who's showing some life here. I mean, Buffalo is one of those teams, man. I think everybody thought and they have for the last five years is a possible Super Bowl team. So seven and six, a disappointment, but. Even though they're having a bad year, they're still a pretty good team uh, at home against Dallas. And da this is the time of year that Dallas historically folds up tent, chokes and gags, and Dak Prescott turns into a pedestrian. Mike McCarthy sucks as a coach and all that. But this is the best Dallas Cowboys team I've, I've seen since the 90s. All right? There, I said it. And Dak Prescott, I have always said sucks, but he is an MVP candidate this year. He's having his best year. Where'd you come out on this one? Bills minus two at home and 49. I'm I'm taking I'm taking Dallas. You're giving me two points. I think I when I looked earlier it was two and a half. I'm taking Dallas. I me too. Bro. Not that I think Dallas is I I mean I still think Dallas is one of again. I think there's a lot of these fraudulent like good like top teams right now. I mean I'd even throw the Eagles in there. But they've beaten a lot of bad teams. Yeah. But I think Buffalo is a bad team. I, I I just think, I think Buffalo is a bad team. I think I've all the quote so unquote good teams I mentioned it earlier. There's there's yeah. none that you could throw I, broad tags on all of them. Miami, Detroit. I mean, in Dallas. in reality, I know Buffalo won last week, but Kansas City had no right to even be in that game after how bad they played, and they yeah. were still like Buffalo won because of a uh, Buffalo won because it was a good penalty. I I wasn't like it was a bad call, but. Yeah, they really like they were they were a flag away. They were right. They were a flag away from losing. Like and it, it like the offsides really had no impact on how that play ran out. Buffalo basically would have gotten beat by a by a lateral play. So Buffalo I, had I don't lost think two or three games for the same mm -hmm. stupid shit though. Like I mean, so it's yeah. there. There yeah, are a couple they, bonehead plays away from yeah, being like it, nine and four too. So I mean, they they are, but like again. I don't once, believe it. Don't uh, once, or, once or twice, once or twice a game, Josh Allen gives the ball to the other team. And this oh, Dallas yeah. defense is the best scoring defense in the league. I like Dallas 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 defense anytime touchdown looks really good this week in my They opinion. are arguably the second best team in the NFL to me. Right there. Them in Baltimore. I mean, San Francisco is the yeah. best. And I hate Dallas, but I mean like I when Mike this Parsons is a barometer game, baby. Defense. Buffalo at yeah. home, and it might be some weather. It, it's a must-win game for Buffalo to stay in the playoff hunt. It's a must-win game for Dallas if they want the if if they're if they want the division and not the wild card. And Dallas so. is one of those teams that needs home field advantage in the playoffs because they're not going to go into Philly and beat Philly. They're not going to go into San Francisco and beat San Francisco. But if they're hosting, they could. Uh, and I'm I'm with you 100. percent I'm taking Dallas. Medium confidence though. I'm not. This is not a uh, lock and load type bet, but I will take Dallas. And I actually have it at two and a half. In this yeah, I had two and two. a half as well. Yep. All right. Speaking of the Ravens, ten and three. What are we on to? Sunday night football now. Yeah, Sunday night football. Baltimore Ravens ten and three going into Jacksonville. Uh, Here's another one. There's so many quarterback situations up in the air. We don't know for sure what we're going to get. Jacksonville is another team very much in the playoff hunt, and they've got good pieces on that team. But, man, have they been uh, up and down. Trevor, I mean, you love to you love to love them and you love to hate them. And I just think Lamar Jackson is the truth this year. 
and and Baltimore is too. And they've had a couple of bad games, but outside of that, man, I think they're right there uh, as a top three team in the NFL. So minus three and a half Baltimore in Jacksonville. And I think if Trevor was 100%, this would be a different line. But in any case, and the over under is 44. Where'd you come out on this one, Vinny? I'm taking the over. I Bingo. think both these teams, are, yep, both these teams are playing for something. I think this, I think this is one of those uh, like 31, 31, 28 type of games. Yep. I 100%. I have it. It's a green light special on the over. Uh, I have it at 43 and a half, and I have this game at like 48, 49 points easily. Like, uh, not quite as high as you had it, but I see like 26, 23 Baltimore. I mean, both these teams can score, and both their defenses can score. I mean, this is, yeah, this is an overplay for sure on Sunday night football. So, man, we've been in lockstep on like 90% of these games. Yeah. See you in the, with our see you in the same uh, recent line. records, <laughs> man, that might be a good sign. We might we might be uh, looking good at week fifteen here. There is a little bit of uh, you know you could you could argue though that there's a lot of teams that are sending it to uh, draft pick mode, but there's so many teams in this middle category, like five and eight yep. through uh, seven and six, that are mathematically alive. They haven't given up, like the Seahawks here, Philly ten and three at Seattle. Three and a half and 48, 47 and a half, wherever you have it. And this is your club, Vinny, Philly, and they're struggling right now. But what are we doing? Yep. I'm not touching it. <laughs> I'm not touching it. Um, our last, uh, that was the hard part of our, our last five games have been the toughest five games that we had. This kind of comes down a little bit. It's still a tough game because of how bad we're playing. But I'm not touching it. I think we win, but I, I don't think it's pretty, even if we do. Yep, I think you win too, but I think you win by like one or two points. And I, I'm yeah. hammering the over, baby. I think this is a big over. I have this at like 28, 27, something like that. Because again, these are two teams that are they need to they need to win. Seattle's playing for their lives. Philly's playing for home field and their lives too, and the division title with Dallas, who's you know that's two of the better teams in the NFC for sure. I'd like Seattle to cover here, but man. Like I said, I think this is going to be like a Philly. Both of these teams love drama. They love a field goal for the win type game. And I think that's what this is going to be. I do think Philly wins, which will probably, will that eliminate, that should eliminate Seattle. Maybe not. I mean, it's so no, cool. No, the NFC, wild card. It's going to go down to the last week. Uh, eight and 19 card. might make it, put it that way in the in the NFC uh, as a wild card. Uh, but yeah, Philly, Philly should win this. But I don't. Give me the Seahawks to cover with medium confidence, but I, I love a green light on the over. Where, where did you see the over here? I'm just curious. I have this at like 55 points, highest of the week. I just I just wasn't sure what Philly team we were going to get. I, I can see – I this is one of those games I can see it being 17-14, you know, or I can see it being a high-scoring game like you said. Our The Eagles' offense has been terrible. The players called the players' meeting after the game uh, last week because they weren't happy how the offensive play calling has been. So I don't know what we're going to get from Philly. I, I'm, They just look bad right now, so I can't trust them to put up any sort of points. And Seattle's a mystery, man. They have looked, at times, they've looked like the worst team in the NFL, I'll be honest. And then other times, they look like a contender. It's a wild, and wild I know ride. it's easy to say it every year. This is a crazy year, but it really, even the good teams don't seem good. And the bad teams like the Giants and, uh, I mean, throw them out there. There's there's several bad teams like the Raiders, the Titans. These teams are dangerous right now because there's so much parity. It's crazy. Yep. I mean, all these six and seven and seven and six teams, it's a wild year. Uh, Seattle is dangerous to Philly right now, but, man, it's, it's going to be fun to watch. We'll see. I think after this week we will we'll have a clearer picture because I think if Philly takes down Seattle and some of these teams take win the game that they should win, we're gonna start being able to mathematically eliminate some of these dumpster teams. Oh, definitely. Uh, I think right now, I mean, pretty much three quarters of the league is still mathematically alive for the playoffs. But I think oh, yeah. after this weekend, because there's so many of, of those six and seven matchups, we'll probably be able to uh, put an X through. I don't know. A few half more at them. least. Yep, half of them. Yeah. So anyway, Vinny, man, again, your uh 
you're putting up astronomical numbers. Well, I'm say happy with mine. If I can win 54% for life, I could retire. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. Uh, uh, this me. week, so I definitely thought this week was a little... The last week and this week, I thought were a little tough, so only a few plays for me, but we'll see. If I hit them, I hit them. I've got 11 <laughs> well, plays. I've got 11 plays. Yeah, I think I have like... I had, I want to. I, I got like last week, so I, I'm not a, quite as big as last week, but I did have six green lights. I went three and zero on my green light plays last week. So if my green light plays are accurate this week, I, I am just honestly, I'm looking for the finish line in the NFL regular season, and just hoping to stay profitable because that was my goal at the beginning of the year. And you have to win like what 52 percent to cover the uh, juice yeah. to be profitable. That was my goal in the beginning. I know I'm not the world's greatest capper, but I do feel like my uh, NFL capping tool that I've built has allowed me to be close to 55%, which is very profitable. Been, and Vinny's doing I mean, some since, wild shit here. Since we've been doing this, I mean, we feel like we've both kind of been on the same thing. And like the games we lose, it's it's, it's not bad. It's just like last, like my one loss last week was the, the Lions Bears not going over. And they yeah. scored 41 spread was 40. Like the over under was 42. Yeah. Like, you know, I took a risk one, you know, one play goes the other way and I hit it. So it's so last I feel week like I went 11 and three and I actually did get, I felt like I got some breaks because there was like, I would say five of those games were give or take a point and a half or something. Oh. Well, and, and most of them landed on my side. Usually I felt like those are the ones I lose. Well, it was like the Vikings last week. I had the Vikings to cover at two and a half and they won three, nothing. Like that was like that was luck. Yeah, yeah. Like that was luck. You know, like it, it's you definitely need some game luck, but it was good though. So hopefully we keep it up this week. Yeah. So as a as a sample size for the whole season, I think you're going to get those pluses and minuses even out. You'd hope, or at least somewhat even out. And uh, you know, it comes down to 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 capping it out. And you've done like five weeks, and you're winning close to seventy percent. That's pretty wild. So let's keep it up, baby. Week fifteen, uh, full slate. And for the rest of the way, it's full slates. And um, I think as these teams get eliminated from the playoff race, it should get easier in theory, but it's not always the case. But uh, Vinny, thanks for joining, man. And thanks, let's man. make some money again, man. Anything let's to close it out? No, let's make some money. What's your best bet of the week before we go? Uh, Denver. I'm going to stick with Denver. Man, I hate to say it, but I, I like that too. That's not my best bet, but it's, it's pretty freaking close. Uh, give me... Damn it. You'd think I would have prepared for this since I asked the question. Um, I'm going to take the Rams. The Rams to cover. What was that spread? Six and a half at, at home against Washington. That's my best bet of the week. But, yeah, man, there's there's plenty to feed on here. I dodged like half of the games. I think you did too. So. <laughs> yeah. Good luck, everybody. Right. Don't be afraid to dodge half of the games. Let's keep it rolling. We're winning. Peace on earth.